If you've ever bought a gun because of a movie, TV show, or video game, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I know that you have. For me, it was the Walther PPK because of James Bond. Not, not any particular film, but just him. And um, it was kind of a mediocre gun, but I'm, I'm still happy with my purchase. Like, comment, do all that good stuff. I know. <laughs> comment with whatever you'd like. Uh, uh, no matter how weird it may be, uh, I'm always interested to hear your opinion on um, matters that are out there. <laughs> so thank you for your support, guys. I'm getting a lot of questions about what AR manufacturer do I like. And I like a lot of AR manufacturers, so I'm not going to pin it down. But what I want to do bring to light is one AR manufacturer that I think is often overlooked or misunderstood. So that manufacturer is Aero Precision. A lot of people, when they think of Aero Precision, um, at least that I've talked to, have been like, ah, that's kind of a budget gun company, isn't it? No, not at all. Um, Aero Precision makes some very high quality ARs. ARs that I'm very impressed with um, every time I get my hands on them. So I think it's unfortunate a lot of people associate them with like a budget market because I consider these rifles on the kind of same playing field as Bravo Company and some of the others out there because they make their weapons that well. And out of all the products that they've made, um, one of the ones that really stuck out to me was their M16A4 clone that they do. So when I was able to get into contact with Arrow, whether when they were interested in working with me, I told them that I wanted the M16A4 clone to take a look at. So realize that this is provided to me by Arrow. So does that affect me in any way as far as a bias? No, because I'm going to be honest, the M16A4 is a very heavy, uh, very uh, antiquated rifle compared to a lot of modern builds that we have today. But if you're in the service, um, either still are or you were, um, then you kind of understand there's kind of a nostalgia behind the M16. Uh, maybe you qualified with it in basic or boot camp, or maybe you carried it for a little bit, or maybe you carried it, uh, no shit, into, on a deployment. You actually used it um, to slay some bodes out there. In any case, it, it holds a special place uh, in all of our hearts because of that. <laughs> so um, that nostalgia definitely grew on me, and it's one of the reasons I wanted to get my hands on one too, because it seemed a lot better uh, back when I had it <laughs> versus when I got it now because the, the thing is heavy and it's unwieldy and uh, it's not free float so it's not as accurate as a lot of the newer rifles out there but dang if there's one thing that you can say about it it's that this is a very smooth soft recoiling rifle so many people spend so much time trying to make their M4 kind of variant recoil softly with a bunch of different buffer springs and all that kind of stuff or trying to make that Mark 18 not jump so much but honestly, the, uh, the M16A4 with a good old A2 stock and that rifle length gases and, and that rifle length uh, buffer spring and everything, that is a very, uh, very uh, pleasant system to shoot. It almost doesn't feel like you're shooting a uh, 5.56 at all. It feels more like a uh, 22, to be honest. All you can really hear is that sproing every time you fire. And you know, with any AR-15, when you fire the weapon, you hear that sproing of the buff buffer spring kind of going back and forth and all that kind of stuff. But for whatever, for whatever reason, perhaps due to the length um, and the way the stock is constructed, but man, you can really hear it with the, uh, with the M16. And uh, it really almost makes you feel like you're firing a toy in many ways. And it's, it's kind of fun because you can really push this gun a lot faster than you would say a stock M4. At least for me, I've been able to. Um, I'm just running a stock uh, mil spec trigger on this from Arrow. Uh, everything on this is stock except for the CAC rail. Um, another thing is that in the world today of everyone running optics, uh, a lot of people have kind of moved away from iron sights. So I wanted to run iron sights on this. Now, I do want to point out that Lucas of T-Rex Arms, who's a good buddy of mine, by the way, really cool, you should check out his channel, little logo somewhere right there. Uh, he's built his own version, and um, Lucas is a skinny thought, so I want, to, I want to put it out there that if there's a vote, that you guys should vote for my... Uh, M16 build over his M16 builds. Uh, obviously, the flannel wins. The superior flannel wins. But anyhow, back to it. Um, iron sight radius is a thing. So that's going to be, excuse me, iron sight sight radius. Uh, so that's the distance between the rear sight and the front sight. And the uh, M16 has a very long sight radius. So it's incredibly, uh, not incredibly, but it's much easier than I thought it would be to run the iron sights on this weapon and transition between targets than I thought it would be. And I'm able to run this pretty quickly and in a lot of um, 
kind of difficult firing positions and locations for barricades and, and cars and that type of thing. I also tried it with the M40 gas mask because I, I like being punished and I just kind of wanted the whole feel of being back back in basic and all that crap. So I put all that stuff on and tried to shoot with it. It's, it's pretty impossible, but, but um, there is a lot of nostalgia with this gun. Um, I, now here's a couple things that I have changed on this build versus the, what Arrow gave me. So first off, the Arrow Precision, when they sent it to me, it came with just standard uh, hand guards that you'd get on a normal kind of A2 style upper. And that, that had to go because it was too lightweight, uh, too ergonomic. And so I put on the uh, Knights Armament Company uh, RAS M5 rail. So this is kind of the rail that was, that's been used on the M16 series of rifles and mount accessories and all that kind of crap. Uh, it's heavy, it's not free float, um, but you know what, it kind of kind of looks cool and that's, as you know, uh, half the battle right there. Um, a couple of the things I have on this, I have an older Surefire Light, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say it's the M951, somewhere right around there. I'm sure people are going to correct me at some point or another. Uh, with the tail cap, pressure switch, all that type of crap. and. Uh, you know, I'm always experimenting with it, but it, it is a it is a heavy light compared to uh, the lights I'm used to running, such as the Arasaka 300 series or the Surefire M300 series, something like that. Um, nonetheless, it is very bright and it does work very well. Um, a couple of the things I've done, if you've noticed, is I've used the Ergo little rail rubber rail inserts that you can that you can uh, get. Just kind of help with my grip. It doesn't always feel good to grip onto those rails, and I hate the rails that the the rail covers that come with the uh, the cat rail already. I'm not going to put those on. I mean, nostalgia, yes, but I don't like that cheese grater feeling on my fingers. Uh, moving down on the rail, as far as attaching a sling, I know I can attach a sling to the front, or I can do the Ranger mod and pretend I'm in Black Hawk Down and attach it up to the front sight. But really, on my slings, I like to run them kind of a little closer together. And there really wasn't, I mean, there are options out there, but there wasn't an option to attach the back of the sling up front. So I decided to get the front of the sling as close to the receiver as possible. So I just use a simple Magpul uh, rail mounted QD mount and that worked fine. Uh, no big deal there. The sling that I'm running is a, sling that I'm running is a Blue Force Gear Vickers padded sling. <sighs> Um, now, I, if you've watched my last video, you know that I said a couple things about Uncle Larry. And I want to say this. M me and Uncle Larry, um, you know, we don't always agree on things, but he's a good guy. He's done a lot of good things for this country, and he has a great service record. And he's slayed a lot more people than I have. So, Larry Vickers is a great guy. I just don't always agree with him. So, anyhow, great sling, though. Big fan of it. I used it for a long time. Um, I do like the Pharaoh Concepts more but I always like to use different slings and kind of spice things up from time to time because you don't want things to get boring uh, with your guns. Um, on the back, as far as mounting the sling goes, I have the Blue Force Gear A2 stock adapter. Now, the reason that I have that is because if I mount the sling on the bottom, when I'm kind of having it, when I'm doing transition work and all that type of stuff, the rifle would have a tendency to flip upside down. So by having the sling coming off the top right here, it allows the rifle to fall more naturally when I let go of it to trans transition to a pistol. And that type of thing. So anyhow, guys, that is my um, M16A4 kind of clone build. Not really much of a clone. I'm sure people would freak out and have an autistic uh, heart attack if I were to call this a clone. But um, it's kind of my updated version and what works for me and what I love shooting. Um, there's a lot of good uh, M16 clones out there that you can buy, guys. But I think what sets the arrow apart in many respects is that it's a lot, not a whole lot cheaper, but it's enough to where you're saving a good amount of cash. So, um, for example, for the arrow build, um, for the upper um, without the rail, uh, we're looking at 499 plus BCG and charging handle and that crap. You're looking around 625. Uh, for the lower receiver, um, you're looking around 249 or so. So combine that together, um, that's 894. Yeah, 894 for kind of this complete build for this build without all the accoutrements and that type of crap. So with the CAC rail, you're looking to add between 70 and 90. You can get them pretty cheap on eBay right now. So you're looking at what you know, 960, 950, somewhere around there. So anyhow, not too expensive. Also, they do come with the, um, the Aero Precision build does come with the, the uh, carry handle site, so that's kind of cool. Um, so not that, not that expensive. Um, compare that to some of the other offerings. Um, Colt, of course, makes their own uh, version without the rail, and theirs without the rail is 1200. Uh, BCM makes a really good one. I'm a big fan of BCM. 
and theirs is around 657 without the handguard. Um, you also have FN who makes their own version. They make two versions. They have one that's set up more clone correct than this, and uh, that one's like 1500, and then they have another one that's kind of basic without the handguard, and that one's uh, 1099 approximately. So anyhow, um, you're, you're saving a lot of money on kind of just going with the Aero Precision. Uh, I think it's a great buy. Now, quick note with the BCM, 657 for the upper only. They don't, as far as I know, make a lower that is the A2 profile and all that type of thing. But anyhow, um, I'm a big fan of Aero, guys. I don't think you can go wrong with them. I've gotten pretty good accuracy out of it. <laughs> this isn't a DMR in any sense of the uh, of the word, but at about 100 yards um, with, um, uh, what am I using? Just some reloads from Freedom, not great. Okay, good ammo, but like not like match ammo or anything like that. I'm, I'm holding like two to three on an okay day, like four MOA groups, and that's perfectly acceptable for me with a service rifle. I'm sure I could do better uh, were I to actually try and have some better ammunition and all that type of stuff, but uh, this rifle performs fairly adequately. So my point with all this is, is that sometimes... Um, your simple rifle builds work really well. You don't always need some crazy Gucci thing. Um, sometimes these older builds, they work great. It's a soft recoiling rifle with a great sight radius uh, with a light and a sling. This is more than adequate for a lot of the work and a lot of the stuff that you guys are going to end up doing in a civilian capacity. Or uh, if you're military and using this, please get an optic on it. But honestly, it does work well. Um, go ahead and throw your thoughts in there, guy thoughts in there guys i'm interested to hear what you have to say about this or for those of you who use this uh kind of what you think of it and all that kind of stuff so um, as always guys we have a lot of good stuff coming thanks for tuning in and no matter what nothing else matters unless it looks cool it's a fact